Hello and welcome back. So now let's move to Snappy X Mesh, you know, the next lecture. So this is the introduction plus the first uh, tutorial just to show you how to use it. Okay, so Snappy X Mesh, it is an automatic split hex measure, okay, refines and snaps to surface. So it snaps, it snaps means that it makes the mesh body fitted to the surface. And refine means that it's doing kind of a Cartesian mesh, but it's subdividing it X, okay? So for complex geometries, this is the meshing tool that you need to use. So it's tough like this. You see this very complicated geometries. You will not be able to do it with block mesh. So we need to move to this more advanced tool. So this tool will rig the geometry, a single or multiple geometries in a, um, using a file in STL format, okay? So always the geometry, remember, is located in this directory constant tree surface. So to generate a mesh we, 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 with Snappy X mesh, we proceed as follows. The first step is generating a background mesh or base mesh, okay? So this background mesh can be generated using block mesh or an external mesh. So remember we studied the previous lecture was block mesh and <clears throat> and emphasize the fact that we're going to use block mesh just to generate this background mesh, okay? So you can use block mesh to generate this, this mesh, but remember, you can use also external meshes, okay? There is not, no, there is not a strict requirement to, to use block mesh. Uh, then also you need the geometry definition in STL format, can be one or multiple geometries. Then you put everything together and you are going to control the meshing process stage using the Snappy X Mesh dictionary, you know? And in that dictionary, you are going to control the castellation or refinement of the mesh, that is surface refinement and volume refinement. Then also you control the snapping or the body fitted mesh, okay, of this mesh that has been already refined. And then you control the addition of the layers or the inflation layer, prismatic layers to resolve the boundary layer, okay. And during the whole process, the quality of the mesh is always checked. So this is how, how it works, okay. So the data structure, remember that always constant surface, you have the geometry, you generate the background mesh, and in, in system, you're going to find this dictionary you put everything together, your, your ingredients, and here you have your final product, this mesh. Okay, so regarding the background mesh, okay, so this mesh can be generated using block mesh or external meshes. The following criteria must be observed on creating the background mesh, okay? The mesh must consist purely of excess, okay? So this is not necessarily, okay? At least in the region where you have the STL, you need to have excess because the method consists in a splitting axis, okay? So in the region where you have axis, where you have the geometry, you need axis. Okay, the cell aspect ratio also should, should, should be approximately equal to one, at least near the STL surface. Okay, there must be at least one intersection of a cell edge with the STL surface, okay? However, the more cells that, that intersect the STL, the, be the better the, the final mesh will be, okay? Th this means, uh, fine background meshes, okay? So that is one strong requirement because as you see, you, you might add a lot of cells far from the body where you are interested. However, everything can, can be controlled. So it is extremely recommended also to align the background mesh with the STL surface. However, this is not, not trivial and also don't waste too much time to, to do this because most of the time it's not possible, it's really difficult. But if you can do it, it's, it's strongly advisable. So these are requirements about the block mesh, okay? Remember, the main one is that around the STL, you need to have access, okay? Then when it comes to the STL geometry, okay, you can obtain it using any modeling tool. We just use on shape, so it's up to you to choose that one, but it's very important that you need to have a closed surface, okay? So you, you don't, it's not recommended to have holes in your surface. That STL surface also can be made of single or multiple surfaces, so later we're going to see the difference between, be, be, between that, okay? And also it's recommended to have high quality STL surfaces. Always this STL surface, the geometry is located here, okay? Then 
we run a snappy X mesh. Okay, snappy X mesh will read this dictionary, and inside this dictionary, we're control. We're going to control all the meshing steps. Okay, so something important. I look at here how things work. You have the background mesh that you generate using block mesh. Then you put inside your geometry. Okay, it doesn't matter geometry. You put it here, and all the refinement. How a snappy X mesh works is by subdividing this axis. Okay, we will split. In this case, now imagine that this is 2D, we'll split one quad into four, and then we'll split this into 16 and so on, okay? So this is how it works, okay? So this is why you need excess, okay? It doesn't work if you have tetra or something else, okay? It won't do refinement. So here you have this equation that will show, you know, the X size requirement with the refinement, okay? So you can get also an idea of the X size according to your refinement level and represents the refinement level, okay? So see that what happened is that all the refinement at the surface is done, and this is very important to remember, is done in reference to this mesh. So the finer this background mesh is, the better the quality will be here, will be close to the surface. Or if you have very fine meshes, you need to, to use a small number here, okay? And this is important because if you use large numbers here of refinement levels, this snappy X mesh use a lot a lot of me, uh, a lot of memory okay so these are things that you need to take into account so the step is like that first just get an idea of your domain so remember that i mentioned when you are creating a geometry it's very important to have an idea of this and we have seen that in block mesh you need to give this coordinate so this is why I was emphasizing there. So you put your geometry and this is your starting point. Let, then you create your background geometry. You put it here. Okay, so here you have some, <clears throat> okay, some comments, okay. Then what it's going to do is snap is going to add refinement in features. So features, we're going to have different. You are going to have edges. So see that you have in these edges, you are adding refinement. And clearly you can see that the refinement level is something about four. You start from the reference cells and I split it four times to get it there. And in the same way you can, uh, okay. So this feature, this exit are extracted using this new utility or application sur surface features we're going to see later. You can extract it using this or also direct it from part of you, part of it. Then see that you add refinement at the surfaces. So see that you have the surface and here clearly you see that the refinement level is two. Also here you have something according to curvature. Okay, so this is how it's controlled. But important, very important to remember this concept that everything is done with reference to the background mesh, to the one that you are generating using block mesh. Uh, you see this, this is just to show you that can you, uh, you add this split in here, okay? So this is not necessarily, so you can ignore here. So this is just to show you how to create ba baffles and stuff like that. So uh, it doesn't matter, you can ignore it for, for the moment. So the next step after you do all the refinements, what Snappy will do is remove the cells that you don't need. So this is done defining this point. So you, you will say, okay, where do you want the mesh? You want the mesh outside or inside the STL? So here you put this point outside and it will keep this mesh. If you put the point inside, it will just mesh inside the domain. So see here that what you have here, we put the point on outside and inside of your box, your background mesh, and you get this external mesh. And see that this is a Cartesian mesh. Okay, so then uh, Snappy will add some refinement now to, to get something better, to make it closer to the STL surface. And see that what we have here is this. So it's a proper Cartesian mesh. And also we add here a volumetric volumetric refinement, okay? So at this point, this mesh that you have here is a castellated mesh or Cartesian mesh. It is a valid mesh. However, see that it's not good for the boundary layer. Okay, so now also the next step is snapping. Snapping consists in making this Cartesian mesh body fitted. Okay, so see that we make it body fitted. So it's much better than this. It still does not resolve the boundary layer. Okay, you need to add finer Final meshes, okay? So a snappy, a snapping stage is controlled in the snappy X mesh dictionary, okay? There are specific entries. Very important to remember, during the snapping stage, there is no mesh refinement. What it's doing is just making this castellated mesh or Cartesian mesh is making this mesh body fitted. So all the refinement at surface, edges, and volume is done in the first step, castellation or Cartesian mesh. So here is just 
fitting the mesh to the body and the final step is adding boundary layer so see that now we add this inflation layer so some software call it inflation layer boundary layer meshing or some people call it prismatic layer it's up to you let's say that this is the mesh the prismatic layer that we use to resolve the boundary layer and see that you add it there and this is your final mesh okay so all these three meshes this this and but are valid meshes it's all up to you to pick up one Okay, so all these steps can be controlled in the Snappy X mesh dictionary. Also, they can be done in sequential manner. So you can do first this one, check that that your mesh is okay, and then you start this one from this one. Okay, so you don't need to do all these three steps at the same time. Okay, you do one, then you are sure that this is what you desire, then you move to the other. So I'm going to show you that. Okay. And again, don't pay attention to this. This is something just to show you how to create baffles or selecting regions there. So you see here the steps in action. Okay, so this is all the steps in action. So while Snap is working, also remember that it's always continuing or enforcing mesh quality. Okay, so it's always checking mesh quality. Interesting, look at what is happening with inflation layer. Also, it's not doing any remeshing of whatever you add. It's just pushing away the mesh and inserting that inflation layer but it's not doing refinement at the surface and this is very important because probably you you have used snappy you realize that it's quite tricky to get a good boundary layer meshing because that is related to the aspect rate so if you want good boundary layer meshes it is important to have fine surface meshes or better have <laughs> fine background meshes so you can have a reasonable good aspect ratio of that prismatic layer so that is a snappy x mesh in action and now let, let's work in this first tutorial okay to see we, we what you i just illustrated what you're going to see in action so just to remind you that this dictionary snappy x mesh located in the system directory is divided in five blocks main blocks so geometry you read the geometry it can be multiple stls castellation you control all the constellation remember that all mesh refinement is done in this step it's not controlled it's body fitted mesh and add layers you just just add the prismatic layer okay so here you need to give some actions and during the whole process always you control mesh quality controls okay in this entry there so this dictionary okay the body something like did okay so at the beginning is very important see that you have these options so you can disable a snap and add layers work only on the constellation when you are satisfied with that put this false this to true work only in the snapping or so on or you can put everything to true and can do it in one single step it's up to you okay so i'm going to show you these steps uh something important to mention that have now that the this dictionary is not px much it has more than 60 parameters to control so it can be very intimidating to use okay so the dictionaries that we're going to give you here have been already cleaned up a lot okay we're erasing commands and also we're leaving the options that are compulsory important but there are many optionals uh, or <coughs> additional options that we didn't put okay so you have something very clean that also we're giving you our parameters the parameters that we we, we use most of the time okay so most of, i think this dictionary that you're going to use here in these tutorials you can also take it for for, for you to parameterize okay or a standard for the meshes because it's very robust okay so here later you can read this one so how you define geometries you have some keywords here with some notes you can read it read it later okay then here you enter in features this is where you do the refining edge edges okay so for this you need to use another utility called surface features we're going to see that utility in action but this utility is going to create this file image and then automatically it's going to to do the refinement there okay so you see these numbers here represents the refinement level the, the number the the refinement subdivisions in relation to the background mesh so here you say two split it two so the first number is the minimum value and the second one is the maximum value the second one it is related to curvature okay so whatever you have a lot of curvature okay put more cells okay so this is how you control i like to have it uniform two two four four it's up to you but you have this option like in here that you can control curvature so you have global parameters and local parameters you can also 
in the STL surface, you can split it in, the, in different surfaces, so you can access individual surfaces like this, okay? This is the option to create this one, so I'm not going into details, so this is just to create those. And so this, most of the time you need to use this. Then, very important, keyword is this one, location image. So you put this point outside, okay, here, and then you keep the, the external part, it is an external aerodynamics. Mesh. So see that here you start to see some, 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 some for to control the snapping, the body fitted mesh. These are control parameters. Basically, it's doing some iterations. Okay. So my advice is just to keep the default values that you are going to see, not the default, the recommended values that you are going to see in our dictionaries. Okay. But here, since it starts to get tricky, and also here you will see many parameters, just use the recommended values that we're giving you. And then add layers, when you add the boundary layer, so see that you go for the body fitted boundary layer, you have many parameters. Again, our advice, just keep the recommended values that we're giving you. So here, probably the most important one is this one. Use this one as a standard one, okay? But later you can play and see the influence well the strongest influence is this one here also you define okay you choose the surface in where you want to add the layer so see that you can put three layers there and you can have global parameters and local parameters okay so this is just expansion ratio the final layer thickness so this is relative uh, relative size true okay it's relative so this is kind of a percentage in function of the background cell, okay? So this is the cell next to the surface, okay? So at this point, the boundary layer is this cell next to the surface. It's not the initial one, it's this one. So you are telling here basically that the final layer thickness will be 50% of that cell next to the surface, so this one, okay? 50%, expansion ratio 1.2, and add three layers, okay? And that's all. Okay, then you have the mesh quality control that you enforce during the whole meshing process. So see that you have many parameters here. You see only the, the compulsory ones or the most important ones. Okay, so as you see, there are many control parameters. Use these defaults that we're giving you the, there. And then you have these debug flags. This is the one that is going to save all the steps. So then you can do now the, the animation that we show you. This animation is you save everything, you can then save all this step, but that is just for debugging, okay? Normal user, uh, users do not do need to do that, okay? So this, just commented all of this, and right flag this one is to save some, all, some additional information to see the boundary layer, the quality of the boundary, boundary layer mesh. So this is recommended to have it just to do some assessment, but also it's not compulsory. So, <clears throat> important to mention, now these are the recommended values. Here we start to, to talk about recommended values. So, here these are related to the snack controls or the <clears throat> body fitted mesh. And see that these are the recommended that you have. So, in case that you are not having good meshes, we recommend you to go to these improved values, okay? But do not go from this to this right ahead. No, just do it slowly. So increase, for instance, from 30, increase to 50, then to 80, and then 100. But I have to say, most of the time, these parameters will, will, will work, okay? So this one in pink, is the one in pink are the ones that you, you will need to change, okay? So you go for the, with this one, go for 50, then 80, then if that doesn't work, change this one to 10, then 20, and then this one. So usually the most important will be this one. So this is the one, the first one that you will change is you are not getting good results. And then you go and change the other, the other parameters. Then when it, <coughs> this is what I mentioned about doubling, okay, do not increase it right ahead, just do it in a progressive way, okay? Uh, and then when it comes to the boundary layer meshing, this is the most important one, okay? So usually, okay, but this is castellated mesh, sorry, this one. So this one, resolve feature angle, this is the one that is going to control the curvature refinement. So remember that you have the option to have, for instance, two numbers, two, four, two, two. The second number is control this one. So this is an angle that is going to tell Snappy to add more cells where you have more curvature. So the smaller this angle is, the more refinement that you will add. So usually 30 is a good choice, okay? So you put something smaller, you are going to have more curvature, okay? And 
when it comes to boundary layer, these are the most important parameters. Feature angle and max phase thickness ratio. So these are the ones that you are going to tweak to get better boundary layers, okay? But do not get lost in all, in all those parameters that you are, you, you are going to see in the dictionary. So let's work this case. Okay, so here you have the input files and the location. So we're going to use these dictionaries. Okay, so now we're going to discuss this dictionary, Snappy X Mesh Dictionary, Surface Features, to extract those features. Also, Mesh Quality, so this is something, and include dictionary here. So these are all the mesh quality parameters. We're going to generate the, the background mesh using block mesh. Remember that you can use an external mesh. And this is your geometry. This file is generated from surface features, okay? The steps you have it here. And when I mentioned that you can do these steps in a progressive way. So see that we're going to run and we're going to get the folders one, two, three. So here you're going to get castellated mesh, snap mesh, and boundary layer mesh. Okay, so you get these steps like this. So for instance, if you are not happy with step two, erase it and restart from one and so on. So that that, that is my, my advice. Okay, if you, you are not very sure that what you are doing, if you are getting problems, if you are 100% sure that it's going to work fine, do not save these steps, okay? Just go ahead and do it in a single step. We're going to work it out. So you do that using the override option, okay? Then remember, when you create the mesh, you are going to create, Snap is going to create this file automatically, the boundary file. Okay, this file is where you have the name and the type. So this you can change it manually or using ch or using create patch or phone dictionary. Okay, it's up to you to do that. Later we're going to work it out. So after generating the mesh, see that this is what you get. Okay, these are your naming conventions. So see that you're going to get all these patches, okay, with these numbers. So remember that you can change the name, the type. And this in, in groups also, you can erase that information safely. It's not a big deal. So that's all for this introductory tutorial. Okay, so let's work in this case. Um, but before moving there, I, let me show you because usually, and I have here a presentation. Okay. Okay, so usually people wants to know, know all these options that you have in a Snappy. And I recommend you to look for this presentation. You can look in the internet. Also, I will distribute it with your material in this for this lecture. Okay, so it's a little bit old, but you have, okay, you, it's commented very well, all the options now when it comes now to all these parameters. So see that you have this parameter. Some of them might have changed probably during the years they added new ones, but these are the compulsory important parameters. So here you see that you have some visual aid. Okay, so you can get an idea all these parameters and then you have a snack control. Okay, those actions. And then you have here at layers, what is happening. So there are some actions that they are not very intuitive, not easy to understand, but this is not important. And then you go to mesh quality controls. Okay. And also you have an uh, introduction here, you know, how they are measured these values. Okay. So I invite you just to find this one in case you're going to have it with your lecture notes. Okay. <clears throat>